Now, starting in June at the Scottish Gallery in Dundas Street in Edinburgh is an art exhibition by Donny Munro, and I'm delighted to say we have Donny on the show. Hi, Richard. Nice to be here. Now, you have this exhibition taking place at the Scottish Gallery in Edinburgh. Yeah, it's it's called it's the Scottish Gallery in Dundas Street in Edinburgh. Now, I know you've been very busy creating some paintings to go in the exhibition because you are the solo artist there, but have you exhibited before at the Scottish Gallery? Well, it's interesting because I, you know, my... Uh, my association with the gallery in terms of showing at the gallery goes back. I think it, I think the first time I really showed any any kind of uh, great number of paintings at any one time was uh, probably around 93, 94. And interestingly enough, I, I produced uh, on, on one of the big tours with Runrig. I decided, you know, people think that, you know, when you're on, on tour, you know, that there's something happening all the time, uh, you know, you're doing, you know, you've got, got lots of things happening, but that is true in terms of travel, but there's also a lot of time, a lot of what you'd call slack time when you're sitting in a hotel in a holiday inn in Munich waiting for, to go to a radio station or waiting to do a sound check or, so I decided that I would take art materials with me and a portfolio uh, and, and try and produce work when I was on tour you know, using up any of that slack time to produce artwork. And I, I came back from that tour and I was a regular visitor in the Scottish Gallery, you know, as somebody who enjoyed just going in to see the various shows. And I knew um, Guy Peplo uh, is the director of the gallery and he is the grandson of the, uh, many, many of your listeners will, will know the name Peplo as being Samuel J. Peplo, who was one of, a group of painters in Scotland called the Scottish Colourists, who were really a big, a big kind of movement and big, a big name uh, group of painters at the turn, the early 1900s, that that period. And so there's a very strong history with the gallery. And uh, Guy Peplow, in conversation, he was aware that I had, uh, you know, been to art school and, in fact, you know, my background in terms of visual arts. And had asked me if I was producing any work, and I simply said yes, I have. In fact, you know, he said I'd like to see it. Um, as it happened, I had the portfolio, most of the work I'd done on tour in my car outside, so I took it in, and he was very keen, wanted to get it framed up and on show, and we did that. And um, he, the gallery sold all the pieces, which of course was good for me and good for them. And thereafter, I would produce maybe, you know, maybe one or two pieces in a year of bigger. That, that, that most of the work I, I did the first time was uh, fairly small uh, works on paper rather than large canvases. But then I started working on more seriously and some bigger works. And I exhibited with them, you know, every year or every two years or thereabouts, but all, only ever as part of what they would call their miscellaneous shows. They tended to have a group, what they call gallery artists. And there's quite a long kind of list of names who of artists associated with the gallery. And every, every year during the Edinburgh Festival, they would put on a gallery artists uh, exhibition. So you were in there with a lot of others. And they did the same at, at their Christmas shows, you know. Um, and so this, this is different in that it's the first time they came back to me last year and said, we'd love you to show at the gallery, to do a show, an actual show of your own, a uh, one-man show. And um, I was delighted, really, just a fantastic uh, opportunity. So that was it. That's, that's the background of, of the link with the gallery. 
you've done a lot of paintings for this exhibition. How many have you done? Well, I've done a lot of uh, a lot of work, preparatory work, and a lot of ideas and, and sketches and you know drawings leading up to it. But in terms of the main work, there's a body of about twenty new paintings. They're all um, they're all quite large. Some of them, about half of them, are pretty large. They're, they're a meter square, which is quite a big, quite a big canvas, big size, and they're based. They're they're all based around. A kind of theme of on the bay is the title of the exhibition and in common with quite a lot of the paintings that i've produced over the years there are not there are often you know uh, key elements running through all, all of the paintings all my work and it's often based around windows or kind of thresholds or doorways or and uh, looking out from interior to exterior world and I've just always loved, you know, that kind of, that kind of looking at that kind of content in paintings because I, I guess that I'm interested in in the interiors and in the objects like still life painting, you know, because objects in a lot in a lot of ways our our human history eventually becomes a history of things, you know. <laughs> You know, uh, the, the kind of archaeology, if you like, of our existence is often based around, you know, artifacts and implements that we have used. Um, so I've always seen, you know, uh, objects like that, still life objects, as as a kind of uh, a kind of history of humanity or a kind of the thing that that places us in this world and that the interior world is the domestic world of, of our lives, but the exterior world. You know, it's putting that, putting our kind of lives, which are, you know, quite transient things in, in the in the great scheme of things, setting that internal uh, space and the objects that we're familiar with, the domestic, if you like, and setting that against the, the natural world, you know, the kind of semi-permanence of the kind of big world of nature beyond and the, the kind of geological timescale that we're looking at so it's just a way of dealing with uh, with ideas and thoughts uh, and and a way of constructing a, a composition around that but so the the, the paintings lar largely feature a lot of uh, a lot of the images and the landscape that i'm i'm surrounded by here uh, at my home in in sky looking out onto portree bay uh, uh, down to the Coolins, out to Ben Dienevig, uh, across to Ben Krakig, and just that, yeah, just very, very much looking at the, the link between ourselves, humanity, the exterior world of nature, and maybe a kind of time scale, and 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 sometimes they they can take on a. a semi-surreal feel you know there's a kind of and certainly in a, in a couple of the paintings there are there's a kind of certain surreal quality I think too Now of course many of our listeners know you from your music side of things but in actual fact your painting side of your life has been a, a very important part to your life hasn't it? Well it's just one of, it's one of these things uh, Richard you know I, I, I kind of I grew up with music Um I had a very early introduction into music through my mother, who was a, who was a well, she herself was a singer, a solo singer and a, a choral singer, but she was also a tutor or a teacher, and she taught, uh, she taught children in the village uh, of Portree, where my family home was. She taught many, many of the children uh, song, Gaelic song, and so I, I kind of from a very early age was used to. You know, having a house full of people, you know, learning songs from my mother and, you know, it kind of influenced and she clearly influenced me and taught me, you know, in the same way she was teaching others. Um, so that, you know, that is there in my background. This is a kind of natural thing without having to to think about it too much. I guess it just, it just you know, it was part of me. But there was an, another part of me, as, I, as, I, as quite a young child, I became really fascinated. I used to draw all the time. So by the age of 9, 10, 11, I was drawing, drawing, drawing all the time. 
and uh, drawing horses mostly actually I had a fascination with horses as a kid and so at that point in my life I realized that I really loved I really loved visual art and that I wanted to train to become a painter a visual artist and really from that age from probably 10 or 11 I knew at that point that I I wanted to go to art school and that I will I, and and I you know in as far as my school career is concerned I did I did as much work as I needed to do to make sure I got there so you know I wasn't I wasn't the most diligent student but I I, I worked hard enough to get the kind of higher and standard grades I needed and I worked on a portfolio and I was very lucky to be accepted by uh, Gray's uh, art school in Aberdeen it was actually the first one I I applied to because of the cycle of applications and I was accepted uh, by Grace when I was, uh, well, I was actually 16, I think, at the time. By the time I arrived in Aberdeen, just at the start of the term in September, I would have just turned 17. So I was quite quite young arriving there um, at the art school and uh, fresh fresh face from, from island life into the into all the, the, the beguiling fa- uh, facets of city life in Aberdeen as it was. And I, I, I enjoyed it immensely. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed, I enjoyed Aberdeen and I enjoyed Gray's art school immensely. Um, so, yeah, and that, is, that has kind of stayed with me. And, of course, I finished my degree at Gray's and I graduated. I then went on to study in Edinburgh. I did a postgraduate year in education, uh, sociology and psychology and uh, graduated as an, a teacher of art and design and I taught uh, at various various schools in throughout Scotland, firstly at the Royal Academy in Inverness, then Leith Academy in Edinburgh and Tang Castle uh, High School. These are the main, main three that I worked in. And then at, the, at that point, you know, the band the band thing had been happening with with runway really from student days uh, and it, it just grew and grew and the the pressure to to really start working full time in the music was very becoming more and more apparent and we then came to the point in kind of 983 just around that time that we would uh, you know work full time professionally with the band and that was the point when, when the, you know, the music, music life kind of took over greatly. Besides your own paintings, I know there's a, another little exhibition going on by the artist Sir William Gillis, who passed away fifty years ago. Yeah, the gallery is on the gallery is on two on two levels. And when it, when I was approached by the Scottish Gallery to do the exhibition, I was first of all approached. I actually thought I was going to be part of another group exhibition. They were they were doing a planning an exhibition on a abstract or semi abstraction in Scottish art, and they'd seen my work and and quite a lot of my work, you know, had these elements in it, you know, where where I would you know they would be they could be described as semi abstract compositions, and and that was the first kind of invite, and I thought, wow, that would be that'd be pretty amazing to be part of that. But they came back to me and they said, "No, we actually changed our mind on that because we'd we'd like to invite you to do your own show rather than be part of a group show, and we'd like it to be running at the same time as an anniversary exhibition of the work of the uh, Scottish artist uh, Willie Gillis." Now, you know Willie Gillis; uh, it's a posthumous exhibition. He, he died quite a number of years ago. But when I was a young well, a student in school age and then at art school, Willie Gillis would have been probably ahead of drawing and painting at Edinburgh School of Art at the time. But I, he was in our lives. He was a real giant of Scottish painting. And for me, he was one of one of the Scottish painters that I was kind of deeply influenced by or inspired by. And... You know, the, just the idea of being able to share, you know, a building with 
with Gil- with Willie Gillis work was just a staggering concept for me, you know, which I would never have in a month of Sundays ever thought would ever ever happen, you know, when I when I was a student at Grace. And so I'm I'm just really you know deeply deeply honoured and and extremely privileged to be able to to show you know and to share a gallery with with the, the amazing work of somebody somebody who's such a great artist. So a real, you know, is a real buzz for me. Apart from the buzz of just doing, you know, having a show, it's, it's definitely a real buzz of, you know, being able to be uh, have work in there with with the great Willie Gillis. Now the exhibition opens on the first of June to the public at the Scottish Gallery in Dundas Street in Edinburgh, and I think it runs for most of June, doesn't it, Donny? Yeah, the, the exhibition opens to the public on the on the morning of June the first, um, with a previous kind of preview at the gallery on the on the evening of the thirty first for you know gallery guests etc. People that they bring in to look at you know reviewing or etc. But it's open to the general public on June the first and running through the month of June. On the Saturday of the first week, uh, the gallery have also organised um, a kind of meet the artist event. So they've asked me simply to be present in the gallery. Now, on Saturday the 3rd of June, between 11am and I think 1pm, you're having a meet the artist. What's the idea behind that? The idea being that you can you can meet the artist and ask any questions about the work or just have a general chat. Um, so anybody who's interested in doing that uh, would be very welcome uh, and uh, be delighted to have the chance to to talk about about the work. It's um, I guess it's different in in the sense that with my my musical life, you know, the work the work is uh, it's a very interactive process with an audience. You know, once you've written a song or you're performing, you're performing it with an audience and sharing it in a very, very obvious kind of open way. And I guess with with visual artwork, it's slightly different in that you don't have quite the same uh, obvious reach or, uh, you, you know, where you work, you're kind of jointly experiencing something uh, through through music and song. So it'll be an interesting experience for me as well. And, you know, you, you obviously feel quite exposed uh, you know that you you're putting you're putting your work there, and uh, you know who knows who knows how people respond to it, and there you don't have any 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 right or reason to have an expectation that you know everybody's going to love what you do. It just uh, it just uh, you know it's a it's a it's a very subjective thing for people looking at artwork and responding to it. But I hope people find it of interest, and um, I'm really looking forward just to seeing what, what people feel about the work. Well, thanks, Donny, for coming on the show and telling us all about your forthcoming exhibition at the Scottish Gallery in Dundas Street in Edinburgh. starts on 1st of June and it runs all the way through to the 24th of June. The Meet the Artist is on Saturday the 3rd of June between 11 and 1pm. And the only bit of advice I'd give you is that if you're intending going to see Donnie's uh, exhibition at the Scottish Gallery in Edinburgh, uh, look for the times. The gallery is closed on Sunday and Mondays. It is open on Tuesday to Friday, 11am to 6pm, and on Saturday, 11am to 2pm. So do bear that in mind if you're intending making a journey across to the gallery to see Donnie's exhibition. I am sure it will be very much worth going and having a look. So thank Donnie for coming on the show. It has been great having a wee chat with you and uh, we'll catch up, no doubt, at some point in the future. Well, thank you. Thank you, Richard. It's my my pleasure to come on and uh, I'm delighted that... uh, the radio station that the radio is going well in your program i've heard uh, quite a number of them recently and i have to say really enjoy them great keep up the good work yeah.